Hi, welcome to Worldview Video. This is John here, and we're going to look at a question today. Um, look at hypocrites in the church, and why there are so many hypocrites in the Christian church. And one of the most common things you hear about, if you ask somebody why they don't want to go to church, is they'll say, I don't want to go to church because it's full of hypocrites. And uh, guess what? The case is, and sometimes that is the absolute truth. Uh, the church is full of hypocrites. And uh, just not everybody who says they're a Christian is an authentic Christian. But that doesn't, um, you know, you think of that argument, and that's really not a good argument not to go to church. If the, the church is the body of believers, then uh, those are the people that are supposed to be truly seeking God. And just because there's some fakes in there uh, doesn't mean that you don't need salvation yourself. And if you, uh, you're not going to go to find God in a place where there are no authentic Christians. You, you know, it's not easy to find God from what you hear in a bar or what you hear on HBO. And uh, so uh, uh, you just, uh, when you have the source of truth and you have the source of life, uh, you need to accept that and believe that regardless of what other people are doing. And, uh, you know, the hypocrites, the fakes, uh, they're going to go to hell, but you don't want to, okay? And uh, you need to do what's right. So, but uh, to let uh, something like that, the fact that there are counterfeits, um, you know, we look at counterfeits in this world. We look at, say, generic foods, or we look at uh, counterfeit uh, uh, sports uh, paraphernalia, or we look at uh, counterfeit uh, handbags. Uh, you know, just uh, all types of things in this world can be counterfeit, but you can't make a counterfeit unless there's a real one, one that you copy it from. And uh, it's, it, you know, the counterfeits are always inferior, but uh, uh, the real thing, it does exist and it's good. And it wouldn't be good in, uh, unless somebody, you know, if it wasn't good, then somebody wouldn't be making a copy. So uh, we need to uh, look at um, why there are so many fake Christians. One, it's Christianity is misunderstood by so many people. So the devil makes it kind of easy, and he really wants to fake you out and let you think that Christians are, um, you know, all a bunch of hypocrites or they're all judgmental. Uh, but you look at the true attributes of a Christian, uh, they are very much uh, positive things. And, uh, you know, just remember that God is love. And He is the only source of love in this world. He's the only source of good in this world. And uh, so those people that follow God, uh, they are following the true source. And... Um, if you uh, really want to have love in your life and you really want joy, you really want peace, that is the avenue to go. The things of this world are, are, are fake. They're not going to last. And um, so everybody, uh, let's listen to one passage that's in the book of Matthew. This is Jesus talking. This is Matthew seven twenty one through 23. He says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven but the ones who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. lawlessness. Or um, some translations would say iniquity. And uh, so, you know, there were counterfeit Christians in the time of Jesus. Well, actually, uh, you can't really say that there were counterfeit Christians up until the church was established was, uh, you know, probably just a few years later. But uh, that's in the book of Acts chapter 2 if you want to check out how that happened. But, um, you know, there were uh, God followers at that time. There were Jews. Jesus, actually, his entire ministry was to primarily Jews, a few Samaritans, but for the most part Jews. And um, th these were Jews that would later go on to become Christians. And he was to bring Christianity into the world. Of course, he was the Christ, and he was God. And he was the one that uh, we were to worship and to follow. And um, But uh, Jesus knew that there were Christ followers, and he knew that there were 
others that uh, would uh, look down upon them. Uh, he said in Matthew 5, 11, said, Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Well, guess what? Uh, we Christians right now are seeing that in an increasing manner. And you see a lot of people that revile us and persecute us and do all kinds of evil against us. And uh, I have a, a friend of mine that watches these videos, and he's a missionary in India. And uh, he uh, got attacked. Him and his wife got attacked uh, for their faith uh, the other day. And uh, the, uh, some countries are coming down very hard on uh, Christianity, and people from other religions come down hard, or people that don't have any religions. And uh, uh, so there will be uh, false prophets. There will be those that are uh, fake. Now, you got to ask yourself, uh, how do I know somebody's really a Christian? And uh, it's a, uh, that's a great question. And uh, I'm going to try to provide you some scripture for that. I'm going to pause the video here just for a second. Okay, I'm back. And I'm going to read for you just a few scriptures that will help us realize the assurance of salvation. How we know a person is actually saved. And uh, here's the first one. This is Romans 8, uh, uh, verses 16. says, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So if you get saved, if you believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior, believe that he died on the cross and that he rose again, and uh, believe in him in faith, and you truly have repented of your sins and decided to make him Lord of your life, and you're born again, then the Spirit of God enters you, the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will interact with your conscience. And uh, there will be a witness to you in the Holy Spirit that you are a child of God. So uh, if you don't have that, then you might want to be looking at your situation and saying, am I truly born again? Am I truly saved? Uh, that, that happens with true Christians. And God gives you an assurance through the power of his Holy Spirit of your salvation. And uh, you only get salvation through Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except by me. So if you've tried to gain salvation and favor of God by some other means, that's not going to work because that's not the way that God set it up. Uh, look at this. This is from John, 1 John 5, 11 through 13. And it says, uh, And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you, that you believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. So there's no eternal life, no salvation, except through Jesus Christ. And you've got to go through the right door. You can't get to where you're going. And that door is Jesus. Uh, next verse we want to look at is John 14, 21. It says, He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by the Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. So we see with a true Christian, an authentic Christian, that they are going to be doing the word of God. And um, what happens is when you get that Holy Spirit within you, then it leads you into holiness, leads you into righteous living. Then if you're, uh, you have the Holy Spirit in you, there's a communication going on between you and God. You say, that sounds pretty weird. But it's not weird at all. It's something that's been happening for thousands of years with men and women all over the globe. And God wants to have a personal relationship with you and, and to communicate with you. And what he will do through his Holy Spirit is he'll let you know when you're doing something wrong or let you know when you're doing something right. And everything that he tells you through the Holy Spirit uh, will be in accordance with the Word of God, with the Bible. So uh, he's not going to tell you stuff to do that uh, is not in the Bible. If you hear a voice saying, uh, man, you're, this guy's terrible and you need to go kill him, or uh, this woman's beautiful and you need to go have adulterous sex with that person, then guess what? That voice is not from God. Because, uh, and there are other voices too, there's demonic voices that uh, can try to influence you and try to mimic uh, the Holy Spirit. And, uh, but uh, we know the voice of God because it is consistent with the scripture. I gotta hit a button here, sorry. And um, God's not gonna tell us to do things that are against his will. 
says the works of righteousness will be peace and the effect of righteousness and quietness and assurance forever. That's coming from Isaiah uh, 32, 17. So what Isaiah did here in this, he basically prophesied about the Holy Spirit. And he said that if you have the Holy Spirit, you ha if you're a true authentic Christian, then there will be peace that will be in you. And the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit comes to bring peace that passes understanding or is beyond what we can comprehend. And uh, it says the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. Those are attributes of the Holy Spirit working in the life of a Christian. And the Christian Holy Spirit that is within him will cry out to God. And uh, it says here, because you are sons of God and sent forth the spirit of his son into the hearts crying out, Abba, Father, Galatians 4, 6. It makes us long for God more. And if you see people that are totally wrapped up in the things of this world, or they're totally wrapped up in things that are evil, then guess what? Those are the fake Christians. and uh, Or a few of them might be Christians that are real, but they are strongly in rebellion to God. And if you decide to become a Christian, but later on you decide to rebel, guess what God's going to do? He's going to try to pull you back, try to drink, bring you back into his kingdom. And uh, can you reject God to the point where your salvation is lost? Well, guess what? There's a lot of controversy on that, and I'm not going to give you a specific answer on that because I'm not sure that I surely know. But uh, some people feel that once you get salvation, you'll never lose it. And uh, some people feel that you can lose your salvation. And uh, there seems to be, to me, some passages that go either way. Uh, I think one thing that might be is that we can lose our salvation if we, uh, for the uh, remainder of our life, rebel against God. And, uh, you know, if we don't want to be saved, God, God's not going to save us. And, uh, you know, there's great warnings in the Bible about those that have tasted his salvation, but then have rejected it. And, uh, but uh, one thing for sure if you get saved and you want to stay saved and you continue to repent of your sins and follow God, He's promised that He will never leave us and never forsake us. So, uh, do, do we get uh, the chance to exercise our free will after salvation? I personally think that's most likely the case. But at that same time, God's going to be working hard to draw us back, uh, to uh, get us back out of sin and draw Him toward us. And I don't think it's probably that easy to lose your salvation once you get it, if it is possible at all. Uh, it says here, By this we know that we're uh, to abide in him and him in us because he has given us his spirit. And, uh, you, you know, if you see somebody that's truly abiding in God, that is active in prayer, active in their communication with him, has a personal knowledge of him, that's a true Christian. And uh, it says here, Now... By this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. That's the big one right there. Uh, a true Christian works to try to keep the commandments of God. They're actually active in trying to running, uh, to be active to run away from sin and to run toward God. And uh, that's to be the focus of their life. So if they're actively sinning and they're not convicted of that sin by the power of the Holy Spirit, then it's a very good chance that they're not a Christian. And, uh, you know, uh, they need to listen to the uh, Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us as Christians we are to walk in the Spirit. Uh, in other words, go those places that the Holy Spirit tells us to go and do those things that the Holy Spirit tells us to do and enjoy God's presence and be obedient to Him. And when you look at a person who's... Uh, now, that's not to say that a Christian will never sin, but a Christian should never sin. Does that make sense? Uh, sometimes we, we will sin, we'll, we'll do something that's against God, but at the, t at the same time, we should never actually do that. And the uh, uh, Bible tells us that if we say we're without sin, then we're liars, and the truth is not in us. So every man sins, even Christians, but God pulls us away from sin and pulls us closer to Him if we're true Christians. And uh, we, we can't continue in willful sin uh, we need to repent of that willful sin, and we need to turn toward God and get that out of our life. Because wages of sin is death, and the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So hopefully that's a good answer for you to uh, see whether or not a person is a true Christian or not. And there's lots of people that like to like make people think that they're Christians, but they're not. 
and uh, they like to uh, do a lot of sinful things. They enjoy that sin that they're involved in, but then they want all the benefits of God too. And you, you know, um, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Basically, is one way you might express that. You've got to do the good things that God wants you to do, and get rid of the bad and allow him to transform you and clean you from the inside out. And that's what true authentic Christians are. And uh, you can't judge a Christian by one individual sin because Christians can make mistakes. And uh, some of the things that we see somebody doing um, might not even be a sin. It just may be a sin in the eyes of the world. Let's say, for instance, you saw somebody drinking an alcoholic drink. Is that a sin? Well, the Bible makes it clear that if they're a drunkard, they're sinning. And they're even putting themselves at uh, danger of, of their salvation being gone or not being a true Christian. But the Bible doesn't say that you can't have an individual drink. It uh, warns us about alcohol. And uh, you know, that could lead to addiction. That could lead to a condition where you lose your willpower and you lose your self-control. And uh, so it's something that you, I don't think the person would want to continue to engage in on a regular basis. And I think it's dangerous for a person who's a Christian to be a social drinker. Is he unsaved? Not necessarily. In some cases, they are still saved. Uh, but uh, if you continue social drinking, then your chances of alcoholism is, comp is increased. A person who never drinks will never become an alcoholic. If a person never does drugs, they'll never become a drug addict. So uh, you just don't judge a individual Christian on one particular thing that you think is a sin. Uh, maybe it looks like they're doing something that they're not do not supposed to be doing, but uh, you know the way we see things may not be accurate. And uh, but uh, we're to try to lead our brothers into proper living and doing God's will. So let's pray, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for your word and thank you for this lesson. And we hope that this will help clarify to some people that uh, uh, there are fake Christians out there. There's a lot of fake Christians out there. And authentic Christians sometimes are a little bit hard to find. But uh, there are plenty of them out there as well. And there are true Christ followers. And Lord, just help us to discern what we need to do to be authentic, non-counterfeit Christians. Uh, this we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for watching Worldview video today. Share it with your friends. There's another video here that's on the screen that's popping up. And there's a picture of me playing a guitar. And you can subscribe to our channel. So until next time, this is John with Worldview video. Praying that you have a blessed day. Thanks.